So, first of all, welcome to Fright Fest. What is it like to have your film showing here? Oh my goodness, this is fabulous. It's a huge thrill. We didn't think we were going to make it, and at the last minute we were able to make it happen because we came from the U.S. Yeah, but we were, you. the quarantine lifted, bang, online. Why is it special for you? It's so great to be back home in the homeland. I grew up in Wales, so it's fabulous to be in one of my favorite cinemas, showing our film, the world premiere, so fabulous. Well, I love it. It's great to be here. I haven't seen so many friends. Friends and family are coming in to see it tonight, so a triple awesome for us. I feel like this must be quite emotional as well because we haven't been able to do anything like this for so long. Yeah. So to have this on the opening night, your film, these kind of crowds, that must be quite emotional. Yeah, it's great to be part of all with all the Fright Fest gang and having them be so joyous as well that we're going, yes, we can actually do it in person. And for us to be part of the, the welcome back for Fright Fest, it's, it's such a joy. Yeah, it is great. What, what about yourself? It's, it just must be fab for you to be in person too. So This is the first thing I think that I've been to in person for about 18 months. So I've done loads of interviews on Zoom and email, but yeah, this isn't yeah. the same, is it? Yeah. Uh, well, less about me. Know, Let's talk about your documentary. <laughs> so what inspired you to make this documentary? Well, it, this is always, we have to skirt around this because originally it was a, a story that we had that we scrapped right at the last moment before we wrapped. We, we got to the point and said, well, we don't need that idea anymore. Let's just focus on the filmmakers and the fans and see how and why they love horror. And it became a richer, more personable story. And, and it, really concentrating on kind of behind the scenes and seeing how things are made and the creativity that people come up with like on just the smallest, smallest budgets and the community bond that really is there with a lot of these different filmmakers. They have their go-to people that they work with, their friends, and just it becomes their, their horror family is their family. I think that's the thing that I took away from it, because being part of the genre for so many years myself in a journalist perspective, it is such a family, and that really comes across in this documentary. I mean, you really capture the passion and the lengths that people will go to yes. to make these films. I mean, is there anything that really surprised you when you were making this? That was the biggest surprise, that the madness one would put yourself through just to freeze to death be so hot the, the extremes of temperatures and what and I would be there freezing my ass off wearing so many clothes lying on this icy floor when I've got 10 layers on literally 10 layers on and they were they they have t-shirts on lying in this and their arms are freezing up they couldn't move and I'm lying on top trying to keep them warm but I, I'm filming at the t same time and Mike, the lead guy, would say, Paul, you don't have to get off. Just stay there. That's the only thing that's keeping me alive is you, keeping me warm. So, uh, I, Mike, what are you doing, man? Stand in front of the heater. You're going to die. So, And it really was getting to the point of severe hypothermia. But it was great for the film. <laughs> well, that's what's important, isn't it? If it's good for the film, it's worth doing, isn't it? Yeah, Mike said, oh, Paul, you've broken the documentary rule. You've interacted with your subject. Mike, you're going to die if you die, if I don't stop and stick you in front of the heater. It was this balance between, do you warm up or let it be cold enough that the fog machine rolls in beautifully across the bottom of the floor? So, so you sacrifice for your heart, of yes. course. <laughs> so, yes, so that was glorious. Thank you. Last question then that I was going to ask you. The other thing I liked about the documentary was how you gave the wider context by bringing in the other filmmakers and yep. film fans. Why did you decide to show that perspective as well? Because you very much could have just focused on Mike and his story. We wanted to get some other viewpoints in there and just hear from... We had interviewed people across the country, but finding those unique voices that had something different to say about what the, about their craft was kind of what we were looking for, and we wanted to also touch on like what happens when, when people have these fears and how your brain processes the, that. Um, yeah, it's just not about the filmmakers as well. We, we do have that moment of, why are people scared? Why do they have these fears? What are the long-term effects of that? And that, that somehow we did pretty well with the filmmakers and what they were saying. Jeremiah Kipp, he's, he's showing slap face here. 
he was almost a Yoda of horror for us. He was so wise and he would bounce off the scientists and academics within the movie. So it paired so beautifully with Jeremiah and we were like, oh, this, this works really well. So, and the, that took on its own form. And yeah, I'm really happy how that turned out because it was a point we were going, ah, do we get rid of the academia? And you know, it can get all terribly snooty. But they made it simple enough for us to understand. If we get it, I'm sure the audience will. So that, that was that, it was beautiful in the end there. So yeah. Well, congratulations on the documentary. Best of luck at Fright Fest. And it's lovely to meet you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.